choose to do a DocuSign um, new employee packet. I'm going to kind of walk you through that. So the DocuSign specialist will send you an email and it'll look kind of like this. Right there will be the DocuSign specialist name um, and then, then it'll say via DocuSign. Sometimes it can go into your junk mail so if you don't get it double check that. Okay, so once you get that email and you go into it, you'll see this big blue box and then this review documents button. So you'll click that and this will take you to DocuSign. Kind of a quarter way down the page, you'll see this arrow and it says, please read the electronic records and signature disclosure. So you'll click on that and you'll, you'll read through that. It's basically just agreeing to sign electronically. And then you'll check here to agree. And then you'll come over here and hit this continue button. Now there's a start button over here that will take you to exactly where you need to sign. But you want to make sure that all of this information first is correct. So if it's not, if I spell John wrong, you want it to be Johnny, you can change that. Um, so then you'll just, if anything needs to be changed, you'll come over here and hit next. This will take you to the relationship disclosure. Now this is kind of a complicated form. If you choose yes you are related to the employer on the first one and anything required will be highlighted in red you'll see that re in red but if you choose yes then the rest of these will pop up and you'll need to fill those out as well those are required if you choose no if you need to go back and change it you choose no then down at the bottom here number nine will pop up saying that you need to fill that out. If the employee is not the participant, describe your relationship. Um, you can just put caregiver. And then number 10, are you legally responsible for the participant? Um, you can just, just choose, you know, if you're the alternate guardian, just you can choose that. So then you'll, you'll hit that next button right there and it will take you down here where you need to sign. So you just click on that and this is where you will adopt your signature. So make sure your name is spelled right up here. Now you can either draw your signature in this box here or you can select the style that you want. And if you don't like that style, you can come over to change style and there's, there's a bunch of them to choose from. So you want that one, you can do that one. So then you'll click adopt and sign. After you, after you click that, your signature will appear on where you need to sign and then um, it'll take you right right next to where you need to go which is the federal w-4 form so again everything highlighted in red is what you need to fill out so you'll you'll make sure all of this information is correct and then you'll click either single married or married but withhold at higher single rate however you choose to do that so then you come down here to number five um, and you fill out the total number of allowances you're claiming and then this is optional number six if you want any additional amount withheld from each paycheck. So, and you can you can continue to hit the next button throughout here, um, and then you hit sign and it adopts your signature and takes you right to the state W-4. And we're using a Michigan packet as an example, so every state form will look different. So this you know again verify all of this information is correct, and then down here it says are you a new employee if you hit yes you know enter your date of hire if you have it and then again down here the um, de number of dependents you're claiming and then this is optional um, the additional amount you want deducted from each paycheck and if you have exemptions that's right here and then you would sign that form after you sign that form it takes you to the i-9 um, now this is the first page and a lot of people get confused on the I-9 so I'm going to take a little time to go through this. So first you need to verify this information is correct. Um, select if you're a citizen, a non-citizen, a lawful permanent resident, etc. And then if you select number three or four you want to fill out the corresponding information down here that goes with that. And then you'll sign that. This will take you to the second page of the I-9 where we need copies of your IDs. Now if you're using a passport you'll put that in here in this first box in list A and then you'll fill out um, the corresponding boxes. Now if you're not using your passport and you're opting to use two other forms of ID you ne would need to put 
NA in there for not applicable. Um, let's say you're using your driver's license, issuing authority, and all four boxes on list B and list C need to be filled out. Okay, and then the expiration date. Okay, so then say you're using your social security card. And then social security cards obviously don't have an expiration date, so you would put an A for not applicable. Now, as long as all of those are filled out, the document will let you finish. So now down here, this is um, an optional attachment, but most agencies require you to have copies of your IDs. So you can either upload or fax your the, the documents that you used. So you just click on that little paper clip thing there. It takes a second to pop up. Once that pops up, it asks you how you would like to add your attachments. Now you can either upload them or fax them. If you upload them, you hit upload, hit continue, and up here it'll say upload a file. This will be different for every device that you're using. So you just have to go through and find, um, you know, if you took a picture, it'll take you right to your camera roll from your phone or your tablet. You can do it from either place. So we'll just do that one. And if it's too big, it will come back with this error stating, um, you know, that it's too big or they can't process it. So a lot of times in that case, you just need to take another picture. Sometimes it could be the settings on your phone or anything like that. Once that uploads, it'll show up here what you uploaded and then you just hit done. Once that's complete, that will turn gray. Now, if you upload it, it will let you finish it. But if you want to fax it, or you made a mistake and accidentally choose, chose fax instead of upload, you can hit that button, hit that paper clip again, and just delete that file. And then just hit done. This will pop back up yellow. So if you're going to fax it, you choose fax and hit continue. And then this box will pop up that says, when you finish signing, we will send you a cover sheet with instructions for how to fax the required attachments. Just hit OK and you'll get it when, when everything is done. So that takes you to the next part, which is the preferred payment method form. And down here, if you do get confused on the I-9, you can go back on these documents that it kind of skipped over because there's nothing to sign on there. You can look at the list of acceptable documents. There are other things besides a driver's license and social security card that you can use. You can use a birth certificate, um, things like that. And there's examples down here. So anyway, this takes you to the preferred payment method form. Again, make sure all information is correct. Now, if you select the employee pay card, you don't have to fill anything out down here. GT does that. However, if you select direct deposit, you'll see these pop up for checking or savings account, the routing number, the account number, the bank name, and the account owner's relationship to the employee. We're just going to go ahead and select um, pay card. Now, if you do select direct deposit, there is an area. Um, we need a copy of avoided check. There is an area down here where you can attach that the same way that the I-9 is done. You either upload it or you fax it. Um, so then... You'll hit next and it'll take you down where you need to sign that form. And there's a few forms that it skipped past. Um, there is a the global cash card, the card that we use. There's a flyer for that explaining how that works if you do want to use that. There is also a timesheet notification registration. So when you send your timesheet in, you can get a notification through an email and you would just select email, put your email address down here, or you would select text message and you would put your phone number, your cell phone number here, and then your company, say we have AT&T. And then you would sign that, which is optional. So it skips past another page here. Um, there is a caregiver link. If you want to be put on a list, sometimes we have consumers call in saying that they need care. This just puts you on a list in their area to find that. And you, again, you just put all of your information in there and sign that form. 
We do have, um, here's a portal flyer. We do have a portal where you can um, view your payroll schedule, access um, employee forms that you'll need, um, and your pay stubs are on there. You can print timesheets, things like that. And you can do that as well from your, your tablet or smartphone or computer um, as well as DocuSign. So there's that. And then it takes you down if you have any specific agreements for the particular agency that you're in. Um, those will be after all of the tax forms. So obviously, you know, you want to review everything, make sure the names are right and sign that. And it'll take you right to where you need to sign. Your employer will enter the pay rate. So now when you're done, that next button will not be there anymore. The finish button is either at the very bottom of the form or up here in the in the top right hand corner but below the things that you sign there are you know your payroll schedule is there a blank timesheet that has the the consumer name on it and the employee name on it and the agency so you can send that in that way there's timesheet instructions an example of a timesheet how you need to fill that out and then timesheet submission guidelines sometimes if they're if we can't read the timesheet we'll have to call you to have you resubmit it so the finish button is either at the top right hand corner or down here you can hit either one now since you we chose to fax the um, documents in that we use for the i9 this will pop up after you hit the finish button and you can send the attachments by fax so you'll hit get cover page and it depends on how um, what device you're on at how that's going to come up so this is what the cover page looks like when you fax your documents in, you have to fax them in with this cover page the DocuSign fax number is right here that 888-258-1788 number and this has to be faxed in because down here it has an envelope ID that is particular to your packet. So if you send them in um, without this, they're, they're gonna go nowhere. If you send them in with this, they're gonna go right into your packet and you're going to be able to see it. So when we hit that finish button, with, when we fax our documents in, we get this, it, the packet will not send to the employer until these are faxed in and received. And when they are received, you can see them right in your right in your packet. Now, if you chose to upload your documents or say you made a mistake, you accidentally hit fax, you didn't want to you didn't want to fax them and you wanted to upload them, you can go right back into that email and hit that you received from DocuSign and hit review documents and it'll pull that up. It'll say review the documents below. You just hit continue. Um, and then you'll want to go down to the I9 where it has that paperclip button. So you hit that paperclip and you can cancel the fax. Or you can just upload them. You can click that again and hit upload. So then you upload your file. Click done and everything else is complete. So you can either go to the bottom of the packet or you can go to the top of the packet right there and click finish. So now when all of that is finished, the packet will go directly to the employer. Um, you can also, this will pop up that says um, either you can create a DocuSign account, a free DocuSign account, and it will save all of your documents electronically there. Or you can either save, download, and save a copy of your document, or you can print it. If you don't want to do any of that, you can just close it, but it allows you to have a copy of your documents. And then it will send to directly to the employer where they review everything and sign, sign their portion of the packet. Then it will be sent directly to GT Independence for processing. Mm -hmm.